Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant. If any of you were getting flashbacks to the movie Gravity there, well, those are probably well warranted. This is a drift. It's a new game that was released yesterday alongside the Oculus Rift. You can get it from the Oculus Store, but of course you can also get it from Steam, which is where I got it from. This is one of those recent games that has been built from the ground up to work extremely well with virtual reality, and it does exactly that. Now, of course, you can also play it on the monitor it looks very good like that and also plays very well like that. It is also a part of that new breed of games which are primarily about storytelling and everything else is more or less secondary. If you've played or seen Firewatch then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I know that some people are not particularly fans of that type of game but for me they provide some of the most compelling and immersive storytelling and game worlds going. So as you can probably tell by now, we're on board a space station that has just suffered from a massive catastrophe. There is a large crew up here but it seems that we are the sole survivor and our EVA suit has also suffered a lot of damage and is venting oxygen into space. Not only that, but the suit's fuel supply is also damaged so it's having to use oxygen in order to power its thrusters. Something that's not particularly good because of course it does starve the player from oxygen. And that's where the biggest threat within the game actually comes from. You're always racing against the clock and you have to meticulously plan every single move because every use of the thruster consumes oxygen. Now this gets a lot worse when you go out into space itself because the oxygen actually does get sucked out of your suit that much faster. Here's another oxygen canister, as I pick it up you can see it replenishes my oxygen. And of course the maximum capacity of oxygen for this suit is also severely limited. But as you progress through the game you'll find that you'll get unlocks and enhancements for your suit. And that these will allow you to get to locations that you previously wouldn't be able to get to. Now the damage and debris within the game really are second to none and they do add a whole lot to it I must say. And this is especially true when you're playing on the Oculus Rift. All the debris just float towards you, they float past your face, they bounce off your suit. And they really do help convey a sense of motion, not to mention a true sense of scale. You can see some of that here as we get outside and you can see the backdrop of Earth. Now I really do think that Drift is going to be one of the first VR games that really does have divisive opinions among the players and that will largely be whether, down to whether or not the players are actually playing in virtual reality. This is literally one of the best environments I've ever been in in VR so far and I've just found Ben Kingsley's apartment here. No, I don't think that really is Ben Kingsley but it's a passing look-alike isn't it? So the reason I say that I think there might be divisive opinions over this goes back to the genre of games which is purely about walking through a story. Dear Esther had the similar opinions and I think Firewatch has done something very similar too although that has been pretty much a massive hit. But the commonality between those games and Adrift is that they're all first and foremost about the experience and conveying the story through the environment they're set in. Whether that's the forest of Colorado or a destroyed space station up in the orbit of Earth. It could be argued perhaps that in terms of gameplay these are all somewhat lacking and Adrift is somewhat that way perhaps because the missions can be very repetitive. You're going from A to B and just simply doing repairs or collecting something. But I would argue that these games are not primarily about gameplay. Their intent, I would say, is about offering you an experience that you otherwise probably wouldn't be able to have. And when they are done well, like Firewatch and Adrift here, then they absolutely excel at giving you that experience. But when you throw virtual reality into the mix, it really does add a whole new layer to things. Strap on the Oculus Rift and you're no longer just sitting at your desk watching these events play out on the monitor with a little bit of interaction. Nope, you're actually out there in space. It manages to convey so much more than that. From time to time you'll start running out of oxygen like this, especially if you haven't been paying attention and using your thrusters too much. And at those moments a little bit of panic can set in until you finally manage to reach a bit of oxygen. And if you don't, well then you will die and be sent back to the previous checkpoint. But added to that, when you're in VR, you will find that you have the paradoxical sensation of both claustrophobia as well as agoraphobia at the same time claustrophobia because your spacesuit's helmet really does sit around you very very close and it does give you that sensation of being a little bit claustrophobic and the UI you can see here is projected onto the helmet's glass. 
As you turn your head, you'll first and foremost notice that you're actually looking around the insides of your helmet. But then, as you start paying closer attention and looking out through the glass, you'll notice just how massive space is. And that's where a little bit of agoraphobia can set in, because the scale of these things is truly immense. I've mentioned many times before when talking about VR that the sensation both of scale and depth will make or break your VR experience. This is something that the developers of Adrift have clearly spent a very long time focusing on. I've spent a long time talking about VR in this video because, well, this game was released alongside the Oculus Rift and virtual reality would appear to be the way the game's intended to be played. And I would say that it actually excels at doing that. But personally, I will say that it does give me a fair amount of motion sickness. Now, I don't think that's a fault with the game itself, but it's just a side effect of what happens when you're playing first-person games within uh, VR. And the developers have added a nice little feature into Adrift where if you hold down the B button on your controller it reduces your field of view down to a little tunnel and what this does is remove all the motion from your peripheral vision and that helps ease off the sensation of motion sickness for a while. It seems to me that both Oculus and the developers of this game have gone to great lengths to try and eliminate motion sickness as much as possible but obviously a lot of that is down to the individual player and their specific tolerance for motion sickness. For some people it's something that they just might never overcome. But if you can get past the motion sickness then I feel Adrift is an absolutely fantastic VR experience. It's the type of space adventure that I've been waiting for for a very long time. Now, if you haven't got access to VR, then I guess your question may be wondering whether or not a drift is worth your time. Well, your mileage on that will vary according to how you feel about these type of gameplays. It's a very linear game. It's a game that doesn't have a lot in the way of gameplay. And whilst its story is not of epic proportions along the lines of Mass Effect or something like that, it is a very individual and very personal story. And it places you right at the centre of this, giving you all the emotions that come associated with being trapped on a destroyed space station. If that's your sort of thing, then you're going to very much like a drift, just as I do. But if you're looking for something that's more, got more gameplay to it, then you might want to give this one a pass. Now, usually I don't do playthroughs of linear games like this on my YouTube channel, but if that's something you're interested in, do let me know in the comments section, and it's something I may well give a go. But for now, though, that brings us to the end of this video. As always, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you guys and girls next time. Hey guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. As you may have heard by now, I managed to catch up with the Distant Worlds Expedition.